Okay. As you guys see, I'm at work right now. It's like, um, I think it's 3.05 in the morning, 3.05 a.m. I took my bike off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, two days ago, I put it on Facebook Marketplace within 16 hours. I had 2,500 people view, viewed the listing. Ten people saved it. One person from Canton, Ohio came to look at it. As soon as he showed up, I could tell he didn't want the bike. He was basically a... He was in his 30s. He was a, He's what I, I refer to as a turnkey biker. He had a little bit of money, you know... Uh, he just told me he sold his street glide and he's looking for he's looking for a custom. He didn't even want to see the LED lights light up on it. He didn't even sit on it, so that's I knew he wasn't interested in it. And then he said, "Well, uh, I have one more I got to look at, you know." And so okay, whatever. So I took the ad down. Naturally, I didn't hear from him. You know, guys, I I consider myself a pretty good judge of people because I was in the people business when I was a contractor and I was very seldomly wrong about the customers I chose to work for. You know, I, I became a pretty good judge of character. That's why I, I know right off the bat. I knew right off the bat that he wasn't interested. You know, maybe he was afraid of the bike. Maybe it was too much for him, too much to handle. Um, I think what he was looking for, coming from a newer street glide, is he was looking for something that had the electronics that um, can go long distances, and that had the um, like the modern conveniences. I think that's what he was looking for. But why he came all the way from Canton, Ohio, to look at the bike? Man's a jerk, in my opinion. He should never even came. You know, I, I, the first thing I asked him is, I said, are you familiar with big dogs at all? He said, no. Well, you know, I mean, I had a lot of pictures. I had a lot of pics of the bike. I think I had about 15 pictures I uploaded on, on the marketplace. I had pictures of the dash, the engine, all sides of the bike. So, and everything I can possibly think of the motorcycle I put, I put on there. So he can't, you know, he can't say that I didn't, he, he didn't know what he was getting into. And then another guy wanted to trade me concrete work. <laughs> another guy wanted to give me $1,500. These, this is the kind of scum we have around Pittsburgh. These people around here are cheap, they're chintzy, and they're broke. I told my wife if I would have been selling this down in Florida, it had been gone, been gone last year. Through all the places I've listed the bike, I've had over four thousand, over four thousand views of the motorcycle. Thought I saw something moving out there. Well, I, I have my I have security cameras here. I'm looking at too. So, but I, I had over 4,000 people looked at my listings between Chopper Exchange, Cycle, Trader, and a Facebook Marketplace, and only one person came to look at the bike. That's sad. That goes to show you the kind of people there is around Western Pennsylvania. Number one, this isn't motorcycle territory. Number two, these people around here. 95% of them are broke. You know, there's a lot of people around here that are in, they're in bad shape. So this is, this is a bad place for me to try to sell this. I even tried to sell it through ZNM Harley-Davidson in Greensburg. They don't want the bike. That's what they, uh, they basically emailed me back saying, at this time, they're not currently buying those type of motorcycles. You know, and I'm, I'm glad 
I didn't go out there to buy that, that Indian off those people. As I heard through the grapevine what they do, when you buy a used motorcycle off of Z&M, Harley-Davidson, of Greensburg, what they do is they, they won't release the bike to you until they inspect it, until they, until they slap the stickers on it. And once you sign the papers to get it inspected, then they come out and they tell you it's going to need this, it's going to need that, it's going to need that, it's going to need that. And then they hand you a bill of a couple thousand bucks. I heard that's what that's what they that's what a couple guys went through with the So they won't be getting my business anytime soon. Cause uh as usual, like many other shops, they're ripoff artists. So as of right now, guys, I'm keeping the bike. I still have it listed on Cycle Trader. Um, I'd like to trade it for an RV. That's what I, I really want to do. I, we really want a Class C RV. Um, I don't think anybody's going to buy it around here. I doubt it very seriously. And I'm not letting it go for a song and a dance. That's just, that's just not going to happen. You know, uh, I, I like to have the money because I, ha I have three credit cards that are killing me each month. You know, I, I could pay them. I, I'd rather pay them off, but, you know, I'll pay them off sooner or later. But, uh, yeah, if I could sell the bike, that would that would be the best thing because I... You, you can't own a bike, guys, around Western PA. The, the, the place sucks. The roads are absolutely... It's not even the roads that are bad. It's the amount of people and the the, the small amount of infrastructure we have here. The, the roads around here are literally packed with traffic because we have so many people from the, from the outer areas that come into, you know, I don't want to say Pittsburgh because I don't live in Pittsburgh. But, you know, what happened with all the people that lived in Pittsburgh and around Pittsburgh, they moved away. They moved out to, like, Mercer, Zillianopel, Valencia, Cranberry Township, Allison Park, Shaler Township, etc. And what they do is they come in to work. So you have all these hundreds of thousands of people that used to live in Pittsburgh. They're now living out around it. Every morning they come in and the infrastructure is basically the same as it was from 1930 and 1940. So you can imagine what a debauchery it looks like. It's, it's, it's a good word for it. It's a complete debauchery. You know, they're, they're coming out of every, every alley. Cars are jumping out of and they, and These people are running stop signs. They're running red lights. They're, they're just missing hitting me. They're coming out of every little nook and cranny from as fast as they can go. They don't, they don't, there was actually, there was two kids killed. I think, um, I think it was three days ago. There was two kids killed. They hit and ran. They caught the person though. They caught the individual. There was two, two children that were, that were killed by hit and runner. This goes to show you the kind of people that live around here. And that's not the first time that kids were killed by hit and runs. That goes to show you the kind of people that is around here. But they, they caught the individual. I'm going to have to do a uh, an update on a crime blotter, and I'll show you the amount of hit and runs that are now happening around here. That's another reason why I want to sell the bike, because it's a matter of time before I get smacked by one of these insane people around here. <clears throat> but I just want to show you, I want to tell you guys what's going on with the bike. And uh, I doubt very seriously that I'm going to part with it. You know, guys, all, all as I do, especially in the winter on, on my night shift, is I'll just sit and I'll polish the engine and I'll polish the aluminum parts on a motorcycle because I have nothing else to do in the winter. 
the the engine's so clean that you can literally eat off the engine. You know, and I'll probably never put 10,000 miles on. I have, what, 5350 on a bike right now. I'll never put, I'll, I'll never get 10,000 miles on a bike. You know, then living around here, there's there's nowhere to go and no time to go. So, you know, if if somebody offers me nine grand, I'd probably let it go for nine grand. Because with nine grand, I have three credit cards I could I, I want to pay off. With nine grand I could pay them off. <clears throat> you know, then my credit rating will go to its maximum right now. My credit rating is very good right now. If I pay my three cards off, it'll go to the highest score that, that you can have. You know, then what I can do is I could I could probably finance a nice RV. I'll, I'll be 100% truthful with you guys and don't hold this against me why we want to buy an RV. Okay, don't, don't hold this against me. Me and my wife want to join a nudist resort. That's something I always wanted to do. You know, and uh, it's on my bucket list, and I'd like to do that. You know, and what we'll do if we get the RV is, instead of going down Outer Banks, we'll go there. We'll go on vacation there. And have a, uh, a natural vacation. And usually when, when, when somebody here as a person's a nudist, they think they're they're either a swinger or they're some kind of a new wave hippie or some kind of pervert. And uh, a lot of people, they do it because they want to be free. It, it, it frees you. And that's the feeling I get. It, it makes me feel like I'm free. So that's a long way off. That all depends on getting an RV. Because in order for me to go there with a dog, I need an RV. So, you know, because they, they have cabins, but you can't rent a cabin with a pet. You have to have an RV. You know, well, I have to have an RV. So I just wanted to tell you guys what's going on with the motorcycle and the kind of scum that I've been dealing with, the kind of... I don't, I don't want to say other words because YouTube would probably... Oh, another thing happened too. The YouTube gave me a strike because there were apparently a Karen or a Darren didn't like a few cuss words I put in one of the videos. So I had to delete a video to get rid of the strike. So what I'm going to do in the future, if I, if I do any cussing on a video, the video is going to be age restricted. You know, that way they're the Karens and Darrens that won't have no ammunition against me. So, alright guys. I'll see you in a what? Uh, I might take the bike out tomorrow. I have to go to the store. Maybe I can make a ride video. It'll probably be one of the, maybe the last ride video of the year. Because it's starting to get real cold. Take it easy. Happy birthday, guys. You know what that means, guys? Five plus one makes six. And that's one. I'm 61 years old today. And I don't feel it. Yeah, so anyway, I hate to, I hate to, to tell you so, but I told you so. The guy from Canton, Ohio, that looked, for, that looked at the bike was full of it, just like I thought. I I could tell the moment he came here and looked at the bike that this wasn't for him. Because he looked at the engine and he said, that looks like a car engine. You know, uh, I think it was too much for him. I really do. I think it was too big of a bike for him. You know, because he, he had a street glide. He just sold his street glide. 
you know, and um, they're easier to maneuver than a chopper, and I think that's what he was afraid of. I think he was afraid that he couldn't maneuver this, which he probably wouldn't be able to maneuver it, because he was a little bit off on a scrawny side, so, you know, I don't think he would have been able to maneuver the bike. And um, it's still on Cycle Trader, and I still have a listing for it on Facebook Marketplace, guys. But I'm um, I'm I'm doubling down on my toughness, and uh, I no longer I'm going to let the bike go for a song and a dance. Uh, I'm going to keep the bike. You know I'm. Um, I'm, I'm really pissed off at ZNM, a Harley Davidson of Greensburg. Uh, they lost me. I'll, I'll never buy nothing off them. I'll never buy nothing off that place. I've heard stories about what they do, and uh, they're not going to shaft it to me. Okay, other people can go there, but uh, I'm not going to go there. You know, it's like it's like the dude from Canton, from Canton. He asked me, "Does this vibrate?" Of course it does. It's a solid mount engine. Of course it's going to vibrate. <clears throat> you know, um, as for putting a mural on the tank and fenders, I'll see. I'd like to. You know, because I kind of want to make it a little fancier. Else. See what happens on Donald. If I don't do it next year, I'll, I'll do it the year after, the year after that, guys. Because as of right now, uh, this is staying in my family. It's not going nowhere. You know, and as for the RV, we'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. I'll figure out a way to get an RV. I mean, sooner or later, I'll buy one. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <coughs> But, uh, yeah, the, the bike's going to stay with me. I doubt very seriously. You know, you have to understand, any of you that is, that's never lived here in Allegheny County, people in Allegheny County, they do ev almost everything themselves. They're very tight with their money. Money comes real hard here for people. It comes hard for me, too. You know, who am I kidding? Uh, look, just look at me. I do everything myself. I mean, I literally do almost everything myself. You know, because I don't, I don't have money to pay people to do this and to do that. I don't, you know, and that's how everybody else is around here. <clears throat> you know, so for someone to shell out $10,000, that's a lot of money for them. And they're not going to do that. Not on a luxurious item. They're not going to do that. So uh, what else can I say here, guys? Oh yeah, I'm 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 getting a memory foam bed. It's going to be a, well. We have a king size bed now, but uh, we have a regular mattress. We're going. We're we're buying a new mattress. It's going to be memory foam king, and we're buying a new frame. We're replacing a frame too. And, uh, what the hell is that over there? Hold on a second. Let me see what the hell that is over there laying on the floor. Oh, okay, that was one of my tie-down straps. I forgot. I had to get a couple of my, uh, my tie-downs because um, I had to bring my the bed in the backyard with my lawn tractor and the little trailer I got for the lawn tractor. Because it's like a 100-pound box. So, um, I'm going to put a picture in here of the Facebook listing I had, guys. Check this out. I thought I had 2,000 people. What did I say? Like 2,300 or something? There was almost 3,700 people looked at the big dog. 16 people saved the listing, guys. Only one persona, man. Uno persona. And he didn't want it. So what does that tell you about people? 
What it tells you is they're soft and weak. That's what it tells me. They're soft and weak. They want a motorcycle that you can jump on it. Uh, you push a button, like on some of the new Indians. You start it up. You take off. It has a big Tesla 12-inch touchscreen in it that you can you can change the the startup chime noises and you can change the ambient lighting all different colors you know every you can have a color for each day and you know the, you can change the voice of the of the Garmin and all these fancy things you can change around all these big things you can change on it that way you can feel like you're a spaceman or something. So, to those people, to the dude in Canton, Ohio, I hope you're watching my video because I think you're a punk. And I don't think you have what it takes to handle this bike. That's for you and your old lady. Like I said, man, these people, they're not real bikers. They're turn I call them, I call them cannon wheelers. Okay, do you ever hear that term? Any of you ever hear that term? A can and a wheel. Do you ever hear the term glad hander? My old boss taught me about that term. He told he was talking about, he was talking to me the one day. I was feeling down on the dumps a little bit. The female administrator was getting on me. He's and he pulled me aside. He was I was working for a personal care home. I was maintenance personnel in there. He said, uh, I just want you to know I don't like her either because she's a glad hander. And I never heard of that term before. I said, what's a glad hander? A glad hander is someone who shakes your hand and says, I'm glad to meet you. But they're full of it. They're not really glad to meet you. That's a glad hander. Someone who shakes your hand, hey, I'm glad to meet you. You know, they're fake and they're full of it. They're hollow box. Okay, that's a glad hander. A can and wheeler is someone that says, I can and I will. But apparently they're not because they didn't. That's Ken and Willard. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. And uh, yeah, this is staying in the family, guys. Uh, probably, probably ain't going to sell. In 14 days, actually in 13 days, my listing on Cycle Trader is done. And that's what I'm going to stop trying to sell the bike. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm not giving up, guys. I'm I'm fed up. I'm I'm angry at the people that don't like the motorcycle. Um, they don't like my motorcycle. I don't like them. You know, and uh, I'm doubling up. I'm doubling down, and I'm gonna get real tough, real tough. I'm gonna double down on what I'm gonna do to this motorcycle. And like I told you before, I used to be pretty good at art, brother. Okay? It ain't going to take the homie much here to get back up to, to, the, to the power, man. It ain't going to take much for me to get back up to the power. I know one thing about painting designs on a bike. It has to be very, very intricate. And you know what? I'm not doing it to to, to to turn the value up. It will turn the value, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it to turn heads. I'm doing it because that's what I want. That's what I want on a bike. That's what it's always been for me in this bike. The way I want it. I don't do things to the motorcycle to pretty up someone else's face. Okay? I don't do it to impress somebody else. I do it because that's what I want. I don't care what anyone else thinks of it. You know, when I was at that Glory Days bike show, guys, yeah, I should have took more pictures. I'm, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm just, I'm just now starting to feel half decent. But I saw so many cannon wheelers and so many glad handers. There's so many soft, weak guys with their, their. Their, their road kings and their street glides. There were so many of them there. They they thought that they're big bad bikers. 
you know, and there is no such thing as a big bad biker. Even a lot of the motorcycle, even a lot of the one percent motorcycle clubs, they do not follow that bull crap. Okay, they do not present themselves. They do not think of themselves as big and bad. They're doing what they like. Okay, they stick up for their fellow members. Whether it's a male or female, they're, they're brothers and sisters. They're team players. You know, it's not about being big and bad. That's the first mistake, man. That is the first mistake a lot of people make when they buy, especially a Harley Davidson. <clears throat> they instantly think they are now a big bad biker. And that's a big, big mistake, brother. That's a big mistake. You know, the one guy who used to work where I work at, you know, since he, he said, oh, you got a chopper. I thought you were a big, bad biker. And I said, no, I never said that. I never said that on this channel here whatsoever. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big, bad biker. You know, I kind of like the, I like the style of the motorcycle. I, I don't understand why a lot of people don't like it. You know, I'm pretty sure if they got it for three or four thousand bucks, oh, hey, look at what I got for three or four thousand dollars. Hey, everybody, I got over on this one stupid looking wop. This big, fat, dumb, bald headed looking wop. I got this off of him for three or four thousand dollars. Wow, that sure is a, a bad looking chopper. Now, you could be a big, bad biker, too. So, like I said, bros, to those people, happy birthday to me.